Welcome back to the Zero Weakness Podcast, where we talk about how to be a better lifter, how to be a better coach, and everything in between. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. This is officially started, by the way. This is counted in the recording, because this is the first question of the podcast. Are you committed to the lifelong shave? I literally have no option. I have to. <laughs> Why am I laughing? <laughs> when, did, when did you first decide you were committing to the lifelong shave? Uh, it was after I moved up in Queensland, so approximately two years ago. It's been a battle since then. I've looked at it, thought about it, but every time it grows out a little, it's just fucked. How often do you do it? It's getting more often now. Yeah. Now it's like weekly. Yeah? Yeah. Before it used to be a little bit more. Yeah. But now it's just... He was fine. he was running the he was running a bit of hair when we first started. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I've seen photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even your first like official website photo. Yeah. I love my hair. I used to love it, but now it's gone. It's just a fond <laughs> memory. <laughs> it's a little bit. It'll grow back, bro. Yeah. I could always just grow like just around the sides. <laughs> <laughs> There's heaps of There's actually it's, yeah. it's here. It's gone here. There's a basketball player who who's bald around the sides in America. His name is Meech on Instagram and he can only grow around the sides but he gets it faded so it looks fresh and he owns it. <laughs> nice. Have yeah. you seen how they do those tattoos now to make it look like you've got yeah, hair there? Yeah. Like tattoo like a shaved head there. One of my mates <laughs> has got that and it's playing up. It's horrible. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> he got like, he got it done at a real dodgy country so it's not even like a, um, like a good hairline. So it's literally just a tattoo and it's like not even a natural hairline. It's like you just got a fresh box up. Oh, I don't know. I'm just yeah. blessed. Like, I think in my opinion, I'm okay that my head's not a weird shape. Mm. Yeah. Who's got better hair? You're Toby Downing. Oh, he's he's younger than me, mm. but he's on his way out. He keeps denying it. He's like, oh, I'm bald by choice. I'm like, <laughs> mate, you're not bald Wasn't by choice. Wasn't he growing his out for a little bit as well? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw him with some length. Attempting like, the other to. Week. Yeah. He keeps yeah. saying it's coming in hot. Coming <laughs> 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 in hot. It's not. Oh, that's so good. Have you had to deal with sunburn? Uh, yeah, but I, not like on my head. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, sweet. All right, well, welcome to another welcome episode. To <laughs> <laughs> welcome to another episode of the Zero Weakness Podcast. Daniel, can I um get you to bring your mic down a little bit? Just so it's not covering your face. Point it towards you as well. Like, turn the... There we go. Is now we're right talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Sweet. Yeah, welcome back to another episode of the Zero Weakness Podcast. Uh, we have got a very... He's not even a guest... He's uh, just here on the podcast. Part of the fam. Mm. Yeah, I've been here so many times. I'm just part of the crew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We actually just needed something fixed in the gym. So we thought, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get him on at the same time. Two birds with one yeah. stone, baby. <laughs> Daniel, you want to do a podcast? Oh, while you're here, bro. <laughs> Thomas is actually like, oh, while you're here. And you were also like, oh, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was your while you're here? The platform? Yeah. yeah, yeah What'd so you hit him with? The fixing the... um. Uh, bolting the combos to the ground. I'm sick of moving them around. Oh, nice. Yeah. What made you come around? Why do you want to do that now? Hey? The combos to the ground. Oh, uh, I don't like bolting things in place because I'm always moving concerned shit. that I'm going to move shit around again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm pretty sure they're going to stay where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Daniel, you said you wanted to do the ahead. Yeah. <sighs> we talked about this. I was going to slip it in at some point, mm. like... Oh, this is our sponsor, but you just called me out and fucked the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, but just so now I don't want to do it. <laughs> work, work your magic, CJ. Work yeah. your magic. I'll say it, but then you can slip it in again, Daniel. No, this yeah, uh, podcast is uh, brought to you by Establishment Coffee Co. If you want a discount on some uh, delicious coffee beans, head to the website, use the code 025 at checkout to get 25% off your next order. And free shipping. Yeah, and free shipping. <laughs> I always forget that part. My bad. Uh, do, you, do you claim... Do you claim the um, the tax free threshold over there for the work you do over there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. Is my it's second funny. job. We uh, walk in there and then Kim just gets out of the way. Now yeah. <laughs> we go and make a coffee. So, sometimes we actually just want a coffee made, and she's like, "Hey guys," and she'll just walk out the back. Yeah. <laughs> and me and Bridge are like, "Ah, oh. <laughs> today would be a nice day to just to relax, to relax." Mm. Uh, no, it's fun though. Barista Henny. Yeah, I like it. Bridget's been giving me some tips, so she's uh, she's actually really good Latte at making art. coffees. Mm. <laughs> Give but us an update, Daniel. What's happening in the world of Southside? Um, nothing new. Just a bunch of people training for a few comps coming up. You guys have got one here. Uh, Strength Quest on October the 2nd. Second. Yeah. Mm. So there's a few people doing that, and then a few people also training for Worlds as well. I think within between those two comps alone, there's about 15 or so people. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty cool vibe at the moment. Um, things are starting to get heavier for most people, which is pretty cool. 
Exciting. Um, yeah, so no. Other than that, same old sort of thing, gym stuff. Nice. Nothing new and exciting. What mm. a, what about APL? How's the world's looking? What, what, how, where are we at with uh, spots? Um, yeah. How's the organization going? So everything's locked in. It's good to go. So we're sitting at about 200 entries at the moment. We have the ability to have 280. So what we've done is we've kind of limited it. So a lot of the international lifters had a chance to all get in as much as they can. There's still a few more dripping through every now and then. But going forward, we have those a few comps coming up. So there's nearly one in every state, um, especially on the East Coast. And then within those comps, they're going to be now classed as world's qualifiers. Um, so once you compete, if you do well enough, you'll get an entry to worlds and then you'll have a chance to compete. So again, the spots will start to go down lower and lower as each comp goes along, both mm-hmm. with international lifters and with people um, within Australia. But yeah, at the moment, it's about 80 or so entries. So there's still a few spots remaining. So plenty of chances to still get involved. Nice. So Worlds is held here on the Gold Coast? The exact yeah. same venue as Nationals? Yeah, the same venue. Sweet. Yep. That's going to be exciting. Have you got like a, are you prepared for that? Yeah, we're going to make the stage way more stronger this time. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. So obviously, the good thing was running Nationals. Now, you've got, now we've got a bit of experience or you've learned a few things that you can change. Yeah, basically don't listen to Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, not a great deal. We want to change too much. We just pretty much will take all the positives and then just try and add more positives to make it even better. But um, yeah, it's shaping up to be a good comp. There's some international lifters coming over. Those Americans are just outrageously strong. They're like, they send over, so they send over a team of their, there's, um, there's plenty of, there's heaps of them coming over, but they send over their core team of 12 lifters. So it's six males and six females. And that makes up their team. So that's Team USA. Um, and that's why we were making that team Australia. So it's going to be six males and six females to take on their team of um, Team America. So they sent over their list of their 12 people with their like numbers and all that sort of stuff. And it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's some strong people. <laughs> like Are you like? Uh, in the 60s, I remember in the 67 females, I think there was a couple of the females were totaling like 460 to 480. Nice. So that's drug tested in the 67s. Nice. Mm. Yeah, and they were in sleeves. They're all in sleeves, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's nuts. Yeah. And I think the guys was like 800 plus in the hundreds. That's crazy. Yeah. In, in sleeves. And that's they're all these guys are all tested, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah all drug tested. It's crazy to even think people would do drugs in powerlifting to begin with. But. Disgusting. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why we have drug tested meats. That's cool. That's really cool. Hey, can you rattle off any names? Are any of them big names? Oh, I'd have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm not too sure. Mm. Yeah, sweet. Oh, it's shaping up to be a big show. How many international competitors are coming? Do you know? Oh, I'm not sure. I'd have to double check the numbers. Mm. Yeah. Cool. It's hard. You know, getting to Australia from Europe is very expensive. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. And yeah. IPL is not massive in Europe. It's huge in mm. America, obviously, because that's where it's born. Um, but it, it, like I've been to IPL Worlds in in Germany, and that was a very small comp versus the one I went to in Vegas, which was gigantic. Um, so it's just a, a yeah a lot of money for the Europeans to to come to mm-hmm. to Australia just like it is for us to go there yeah um, but a lot of them have you know uh, cost of living is different the wages are different it's it's not quite as as easy uh, so at Worlds you get a lot of masters lifters because they're retired and and have their money um, but America is a little bit cheaper to come back and forth mm-hmm. and um, Team America, I'm pretty sure they put some funding towards their travel and stuff. So yeah. it'll be cool to have a bit of international presence. Yeah. I guess that's why when you see all the world competitions in Europe, that's why they're so big with so many different countries. Because mm-hmm. if you're in France and you want to go to the UK or whatever, it's like a what, couple of hours on, the train, on the train or whatever train, it is. Yeah. 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 So straight over there rather than paying, you know, $2,000 for a round trip mm-hmm. to come and compete in a powerlifting competition. So, yeah. yeah. At least COVID is kind of done with. Mm. Yeah. It's so much easier to get around now and a lot less scary for people in terms of worrying whether there's going to be a lockdown or something. Well, were there still the world's, sorry, were there still the world's events when COVID was on? Was there one last year? No, no I don't think so. No, I was going to say that was actually a deterrent for some of the Americans coming over for this one because we still had the vac up until a few weeks ago. We still needed to be double vaccinated to get into the country, which deterred a lot of lifters. Like we got a lot of emails being like, oh, you know, what are your laws? Because we're not vaccinated. We don't want to come in because of this, this, and this. And yeah, that deterred a few people to begin with. But that's been scrapped now, I believe. Oh, has it? Yeah. Wow. Like three I weeks ago, that. I think you're allowed to just come back in. Yeah. yeah you don't oh, need to be good. double vaccinated anymore. Yeah. So is travel just normal everywhere now? Uh, I'm pretty sure there's still some some stuff, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think it's quite as intense as it has been. 
Yeah, some countries are still blocked off. Yeah. Like, I don't think you can fly into China if you want to. Mm. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, um, <coughs> well, we're meant to do this at the start, but Daniel, we do something every week on the podcast. Mm-hmm. We've probably done it twice now. <laughs> where we say something that we're grateful for. Yeah. You know, just gets the gets the day rolling, gets you feeling feeling good. Um, Bridget, do you want to start? Do you want to tell us what you're grateful for this week? Um, mine's the same as last week because I finally got my car back now. So it's back from the repair shop. Thank you, James, That's right. <laughs> for yeah. calling them. But yeah, I've got my car back. I don't have to take public transport anymore. Grateful so. for Hitman Henny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch out. Henchman yeah. Henny. He yeah. called them up and gave them a serve and they said it'll be ready this afternoon. Yeah. So I said, thank oh, you. I hit them with the, can I come down and check the progress? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. And then, yeah. And then he went in there all staunch, just stood next to me silently. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't scared at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was a little bit scared. <laughs> they were just, fuck. They were just annoyed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's Henny's backstory. He had like eight months of dealing with this with his own car. Yeah, that was a nightmare. Yeah, that's right. That was horrible. Mm. Yeah, my uh, for the listeners that care, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had a car that was in the mechanics for eight months. It's insane. Yeah, nothing happened. Nothing got fixed. It was wow. shit. <laughs> but it's all good. Um, it was in there for so long that I stopped asking. Yeah, like you, you just you just assume it's been three months. Uh, it's it's probably sorted, and then you say something about your car, and like still dealing with that. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I come to I'd come to you with a story like every week, bro. Guess what the mechanic said this time? But then it just got to the point of beyond ridiculous. It's just wild. Mm. And then he had the audacity to ask me to come pick up my car. <laughs> like, bro, you fucking get that delivered to my house. <laughs> it doesn't drive. Get it delivered to my house. <laughs> and he did. But yeah, he actually asked me to come pick it up. I'm like, how am I meant to get it? He's <laughs> like, oh, you can get a tow truck. I got, I got a number I can call. <laughs> nah, brother, you oh, dropped that thing to my house. God. But yeah, um, my grateful for this week is the weather. It's starting to get warmer, mm. a little bit warmer in Queensland. Mm. We're pretty lucky uh, with the weather in Queensland to begin with. I'm guessing we're the, well, I'm not guessing. I know we're the warmest state in Australia. And on the Gold Coast, we're pretty lucky that the weather doesn't fluctuate uh, between like really dramatic highs and lows. So it's uh, pretty good. So that's my grateful. Supposed to be getting cold again, though. Mm. Hear that? I hope so. Sorry, James. <laughs> what's yours, Daniel? Oh. What are you, what are you, what's your gratitude? I'm for grateful that? for this smooth roasted blend from Establishment Coffee Co. <laughs> How good would that have been if you didn't fuck it up? <laughs> oh, you ruined it. Um, on Sunday, I had to do a little bit of work at the gym, and I called up uh, Toby, and the guys came down on Sunday and gave me a hand, and I thought that was really cool to just have that sort of team of people that nice. willing to just come down on a Sunday and help me do stuff. When really I didn't need help. I just wanted people hanging out with. That's so nice. What'd you have to do? Uh, we put a power rack up in the corner. Oh, a that's power it. rack up in the corner. Yep. At Southside. Yep. I didn't even notice this morning. Yeah, that's how secret it was. Wait, <laughs> you mean one of the um that cage thing? Where is it? Which corner? That's how sleek. It's <laughs> in the corner up the front where the music and stuff is. So people can do floor presses and stuff I like was that without staring at this cor- that. Jeez, I'm blind. There you go. That's you should have rung me, bro. And then I would have told you I can't come. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, what have we been up to? <laughs> uh, just training. Just living life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm deloading this week. So I'm. that's my other gratitude. Sick, mm-hmm. sick, sick of being sore. Another few weeks of bodybuilding stuff. And then that's going to be interrupted because I've got to go to Europe. Take zero on tour. Oh, yes. Is island? Yeah, yeah, so I'm heading over there for the Irish Pro. We've got a lift of Dale Longford that's competing over there. Uh, he's a monster. He's going for the biggest ever, I think the biggest ever total or the biggest ever dots under 100 kilo weight class, like under 100 all classes in the UK. He's currently got the biggest deadlift, I think, under 90 kilos. 340? No, he's done more than that, 355. Really? Yeah. Damn. At under 90. Uh, he benches in the... In the low 200s, like 220-ish, um, and yeah, squats around the same, 350. Insane. So he's he's trying to push his dots up to beat Tom Martin, who's currently the number one spot. So he's going for that at the Irish Pro. And while I'm over there, I'm doing workshops in Ireland and Wales, and then um, I've been asked to do one in Scotland as well, so we'll see if we can organise that. Are you catching up with Jordan while you're in Yeah, Wales? yeah, yeah. So Excellent. I'm doing the, the workshop out of the gym that he sometimes trains at and does um, – uh, does work at, and uh, he ran the coach development with all the clo- coaches in that gym as well. So yeah, cool. It's a place called Ion. He gave you that shirt. That's sick. 
So that's me. What about you? What are you up to? I just wanted to say, Dale Longford is also the only guy in powerlifting that wears a stringer. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. It's always the same one too, eh? That blue stringer. Yeah. Loves to make his deadlifts hard. This guy like will pull 310 for a triple, but he'll put the bar down, walk back, and then walk back up to it every rep. I'm pretty sure I've seen him do it for like a set of eight. Yeah. Yeah. He loves the full reset. Yeah. Why does he love that? Don't know. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. No idea. Mm, what have I been up to? Uh, same old work, bit of training, bit of everything, just living. Um, got a dinner this weekend with uh, yeah, with all the people I coached at Nationals. Um, they'll be cool. We're going to get some Korean barbecue, so it'll be fun. Uh, but nothing exciting. Did you get invited to that one? Or? Uh, no, I didn't get coached by him. Oh. Well, I coached <laughs> Daniel for about a week. <laughs> it was the best coaching week I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Gidge, what have you been up to? Um, same as well. Just training still in a volume block week four. Looking forward to my deload next week. Um, I was going to do strength quests. I've changed that now. I'm going to wait till the Christmas cup and do a proper prep. Nice. Um, yeah. Didn't want to rush my prep. So that's about it on my end. First comp for you. Exciting. That'll be your first comp in a year. Yeah. Pretty much almost exactly a year. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, your last Christmas comp was, cup. yeah, Christmas cup. Nice. Yeah. It's going to be good. It's a fun comp. What numbers are you chasing? Um, This is just for fun. Purely for fun. I'm not thinking about numbers yet. No, that's I'll awesome. worry about that. Yeah. yeah that's later. awesome. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I can just, uh, if I can get the same numbers that I got uh, at the Christmas cup last year, I'll be happy. <laughs> that's bullshit. I don't believe it. I know <laughs> I know. you're a lifter. All lifters will say, nah, it's just- All I right, just, I want to I wanna get 60 on my bench. Okay. I want to PB my squat, so that's at least 125. I want two reds. And then uh, deadlift, I don't know, 130. Okay. That's yeah. better. <laughs> Next question then. Why were you dishonest the first time? Yeah. Because I am, I wasn't. I am just doing it for fun. If I start mm. focusing on numbers, then mm. I'll throw myself off. All right. Well, then squat <laughs> fifty, bench forty, and deadlift eighty, and see if you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me yeah. if I'm so fun. <laughs> Tell me if that's fun. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just pulling your chain. I do love that question though. Whenever you ask someone, you're like, "What do you want to do at this comp?" They're like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, I thought about it." It's like, <laughs> fun. <laughs> You haven't thought about this 40,000 times in the last five weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Legit. What All have you been up to, Dan? Every day. Um, just work stuff, cruising along, um, APL stuff, zero stuff. Uh, started week one of my prep for Worlds this week. Nice. So Worlds in uh, the US. Alabama. Yeah. So not Worlds in Australia, but Worlds in the US. And then- um, yeah, When so is that? Really Sorry. Cool. October 22. Yeah, cool. So just before the Australian one. Nice. Are you doing that as well, Thomas? No. No. You were going to? No, I didn't get invited. Do you not do it? No, nah, there's. I wanted to do equipped, but I didn't realize that IPL over there do equipped separately. Oh, like that. That's the comp we were just talking about mm. in yeah. um, mm-hmm. Utah. Yeah. yeah, that's the equipped worlds. Surely, can you go over there and do deadlift only? I, I don't. I don't want to compete. <laughs> just put a single ply suit under your suit. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't break any records, and they won't check your equipment. <laughs> Represent Australia. Perfect. <laughs> uh, words from the federation. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you guys know that Alabama is on the ocean? No. Really? Did you know that, CJ? I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah, this this thing is at like, it's called Orange Beach? Yeah, Orange Beach. It's at Orange Beach. And I'm like, you can't call a place a beach that's in the <laughs> middle of the country. And then I looked it up and I'm like, it's on the ocean. Wow. Well, I feel like Americans looking at Australia and being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Melbourne, the capital of Australia. <laughs> it's about half an hour's drive from Sydney. <laughs> Wait, well, Alabama. Um, no, of course it's by the ocean because their thing's roll tide. The football team, they say roll tide because of the water. Uh, uh, yeah. Is that oh, where obviously. that comes from? Yeah, yeah, roll tide. <laughs> They go roll tight. Yeah. I just think of sports. sweet home Alabama and I think of like country. The yeah. country. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a bit of trivia. Wow. All right. Um, today we haven't really got much to talk about. We're just going to do a and a Oh, no, nah, fuck. We had a barbecue on. F- Bro, Thomas. Yeah. You're a gun on the smoker. <laughs> We've had a requested or every Friday. <laughs> do, you know, do you know how much money I <laughs> spent on meat? <laughs> well, we're not doing it every Friday unless I charge money. I'm thinking of doing Wait, it at you, comps though and selling like brisket burgers yeah. for like sixteen to eighteen dollars like they would yeah. at, from a food truck. Be good revenue for the gym. Mm. That'd be cool. Plus it feeds all the helpers. Yeah. 
That's cool. You'd have that to is a cool idea. Okay, so we had a barbecue at the gym on Friday. Thomas whipped out the smoker. Is that going to stay here? Yeah. First, yeah. first try. I've never used an offset smoker like that, and I've never cooked exclusively with a wood. Mm. Did uh, really well. Yeah, I'm not lying when I say that was literally the best meat I've ever had. Oh, so it could yummy. be a lot better. It was actually. It was fuck Daniel. It was actually. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, oh my <laughs> fucking god, <laughs> this is. Some. Did you brought me some home? Oh. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Daniel always so gets yummy. a care package. Did you, how many kilos was that in total? 10 kilos of brisket. Damn. <laughs> and then another, whatever, three or four of short ribs. And chicken wings. And chicken yeah. wings. Mm. So chicken wings. <laughs> well, how much is a brisket? <laughs> One of those briskets. They were expensive this time because it was Wagyu. Yeah. It was like seven to eight score. I think it was like 30 bucks a kilo, something like that. Oh, you just spent <laughs> yeah. a bit on meat, eh? Well, they're always, they're always expensive. Mm. Which like, is weird because brisket's supposed to be the cheap crap. But now that it's like super expensive. Yeah, it's because it's, it's a wanky. Everyone wants it now. Yeah. Same like, with oh, lamb shanks meat. now. You pay so much for a lamb shank. We used to feed it to the dog yeah, when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Beef cheeks are the same. Yeah. Do you smoke the whole thing or do you sous vide it first? No, no, no. It's, I smoked it all the way, yeah. Damn. Yeah, he smoked smoked the brisket, smoked the gym he out. He did it all. Gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. CJ, that would have been a nice present times. when he came up here. <laughs> it's stink of smoke. <laughs> I thought it would still smell like that on Monday. Yeah, same. But it was all it was mm. all good. Either that same. or we're so used to our s- lungs are <laughs> messed up now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it was actually the uh, the best meat. That was honestly, I'm not even fucking saying that. It's the best meat I've ever had. Same. Yeah, so shout out to Stefan. He he made the smoker for me and he, I was on the phone basically all day to him learning how to use the thing because I had no idea of making it up as I went along. Well, you nailed it, Thomas. It's well, really good. Yeah, that guy. So uh, September 17th, 18th? It's mm. a novice comp. Eight, 18th. September 18th. Nah, strength, strength quest. September strength 18th, quest. the novice comp. It's going to be brisket. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Short ribs. Strength September quest. 18th. <laughs> <laughs> I don't but know. Maybe I'll do September 18th as a trial run and sell sell a little bit. And then if if that's successful, strength quest, I'll cook like, I don't know. Uh, what did I do? 10. I'll just cook like 20 kilos of brisket. Perfect. And, and sell some on the day. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you saw... Um, <clears throat> our social media team, they actually uploaded a, a mock-up of the Zero Barbecue, the barbecue shop, the Zero the Smokehouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, CJ, remember last week we were talking about you taking over more of the <laughs> social media stuff? That's what we need to prevent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was so good when I did that. You know, you, you're getting quite funny on social now yeah. with the mm. with your little Josh Takua transition. <laughs> yeah, you, like, you like that one? <laughs> Fuck. Oh. Uh, I thought about it. I was like, maybe I should give that idea to CJ to make a wee snippet. But uh, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. Um, all right. Well, today's potty. We've got, we've, got a, we've got a topic, but I just wanted to... We'll start with a Q&A. Sure. We'll start with a Q&A, eh? All right. So I've got a few questions from Tombro's uh, Instagram. The Q&A boxes work really well when we put them on his, on the Zero Weakness page. Not so well. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, um... So the first question is, this is for everyone, who do you guys look up to in the fitness industry? Daniel. Or me first? Yeah, hit it. Um, in terms of powerlifting, I guess the two coaches that I say I would look up to the most would be originally Thomas, and then um, Josh Bryant as well from Jailhouse Strong. I really love that stuff that he does. Um, other than those two, there's not a great deal of coaches I really look into much. It's weird you say that because you don't have a neck machine. Mm. No. Josh like, Bryant would yeah. charge a neck machine. Mm, Josh Bryant wouldn't use a machine for his neck. He would use body weight things. Ooh. That sort of sort. He's gas station ready. Yeah. Be the machine. He'd tie, the machine. He'd tie his head to like a barrel in a farm like Tom Haverland. That guy's a weapon. See, that's what we need to be doing. We need more barrels and farms. <laughs> and horses. <laughs> Absolutely. Coming to a zero near you. What about in general? In general? Yeah. Like outside, because you just you, you you segregated it to powerlifting, but you're you're a bit more abreast of the whole general bodybuilding world. Oh, like who do I look up to in the bodybuilding world, or like in the fitness, fitness industry? Yeah, yeah. Fitness, fitness space so, in general. Um, I guess in the fitness space in general, the podcasts or the sort of media that I've I would follow. Um, there's a guy he used to be a bodybuilder called Fuad. He's got a podcast. He's the man. He's got a few guys on there, and they all sort of like it's more of like a new age ish bodybuilder thing. I look up to all the stuff that those sort of guys do. So it's sort of like actually making your training fun, like making bodybuilding. It still is like or training and fitness in general. It's a little less serious. It's a little bit more fun, but still with that, like all the different methods of how they do it and all that sort of stuff. 
the thing I like about following these guys is they just seem to be open about everything they do. So it's not just like, you know, back when we were younger, you read in a magazine, it's like three by 10 of this or whatever ridiculous exercises it was. It's like they're a, little bit, a lot more upfront with everything they do um, in terms of everything from training to food, lifestyle, PEDs, the whole lot. Mm. And I think that's really interesting. I think it's good that we live in an age where you, you can do that and have that. What's the podcast called? Uh, the Real Bodybuilding Podcast. But it's called Bro Chat with the four of them. Yeah, so they do a couple versions of it, depending mm. on who the guests are. Yeah. Get you, Doug? Um, you and Thomas. Wow. My coaches. Yeah, I just think of you guys as mentors. I don't really follow that many people on social media. I'm not really into influencers and that sort of thing. But you guys have taught me so much in the past year, year and a half that I've been here. And yeah, nice. you too. <laughs> what what about before us? Before you knew us? Oh, I don't even want to say because that's embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> it was Ooh. Brett Contreras. <laughs> that's alright. Oh, yeah. No, I can't stand him now. I shouldn't say that. Why I mean, not? Yeah. What changed? Um, oh, I don't really want to get into it. I just heard some pretty nasty things about him. Yeah, that he's not actually the person that I thought he was. Fair yeah, enough. yeah. We don't have to keep that in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a dog. I don't like to talk bad about people about anyone. James. <laughs> um, who did I look up to? I think my first influence in the fitness industry was Steve Cook. Mm -hmm. He was the As man. In like the ON guy? Yeah. Like, so when I was young and like, you know, we, you get into bodybuilding, I, I looked up to him. I thought he was the man. So he was like the first guy. So I still kind of, I don't actually follow any of the stuff anymore, but I, he's still there for me. Is he, is he still active? He's on the Gold Coast, bro. What? For good? Yeah. I'm, I've messaged him like three or four times asking him to come on the potty. Huh. Yeah, but. Steve Cook, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Message him. Get him on the podcast. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've met him. Oh, yeah. You said that in Ohio. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's my, that's my my little story. Yeah. It's like I, I recognize him, but I didn't know who Steve Cook was. I just knew, like, you know, he popped up. Um, like, if, if you asked me to tell that story before you said his name, just then I wouldn't be yeah. able to recall his name. But there was a really long line for, for the toilet, and he was behind me. Uh, and it was just like... I'm ahead of you in the toilet line. Like, there's nothing you've got, you know, millions of followers and you've got this huge influence. You still got to wait in line to piss with the rest of us. <laughs> um, he was really nice. <laughs> but the um, right story <laughs> right now, look, you're welcome. My biggest uh, influence right now, just for me and my training, is this guy called Nick Beer. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. Nick Beer. So he's a guy over in Texas and he's a bodybuilder, he's done powerlifting. He just ran a 248 marathon, which is sub four minute K. So he's a fucking freak. And he does triathlons and he does Ironmans, but he's a bodybuilder. Damn. So he's fucking jacked out of his brain and he just trains like an animal and does everything. Nice. So I really like what he does. I like watching his stuff on YouTube because, I don't know, it's kind of like, oh, cool. I want to mm. do that. Mm. That's mine. Yeah, wow. Um,. I don't know. There's been so many over the years that it'd be unfair to like point out one or two. Um, I think people I currently looked up look up to massively, Jordan Shello and uh, just Prescript Jinta, like those guys in general, what they're doing and, and how they're moving in the business world and what they've created. And just on top of that, or more importantly, who they are as people is, is really quite inspiring. It's like that blend of, being absolute wor workhorses and unrelenting in that regard, but just genuine, cool, down to earth people. Um, and like, you know, I've known jo Jordan for years since before he was massive on social media and everything like that. Uh, but to see that nothing's really changed with him in terms of just who he is, is, is really inspiring. And to be refreshed and reminded of that when they were here a couple of weeks ago is, is fucking cool. Mm. I love that. I like it a lot. Um, I don't know. There's so many others. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. That was really cool having them on the podcast. It's, like I said, it's the first time I've ever fanboyed over, I can't remember the last time I, like the last time I genuinely fanboyed was probably when I was like, you know, early 20s or late teens over a footy player or something. But I kind of freaked out when they were here. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it was funny when they pulled up. <laughs> mm. It seemed weird that they were just sitting across the room from me. I was like, fuck, that's Jinta's voice in real life. Like talking onto talking on our microphones like this is our podcast see on our podcast <laughs> yeah i'm still freaking out um it's so weird the the weirdest thing about meeting anyone especially someone you idolize or someone who you've followed for ages but never met 
it's just like like that awkward time between relaxing into conversation and being like, oh, we can we can talk now, and like the, the time between that and seeing them arrive, and like seeing them walk in and being like, oh, they're shorter than they look, or they're mm. taller than they look, or they're huge, or they're little, or their voice is deeper, or their hair's different, or whatever. Like in that weird, like, hi, I'm, uh, hi, like trying to establish who you are to them, so you can then relax into. Once all that's out of the way, mm. it's cool. Yeah. Actually, that just reminds me of someone else that I do look up to in the fitness industry, and that's Isabella von Weisenberg. Mm. And I was lucky enough to have her in the coach development program that I did recently. That was really cool. She was the first powerlifter I ever followed yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah, I think she's been, lovely. I think that's really cool. What What is really cool about the sport that we do in that terms of like fitness industry thing is like our idols or our heroes are not that unobtainable yeah like if you follow mm. basketball and you're like oh lebron james is my favorite player you mm. can't just like call him up and be like hey can i get coached by you yeah it's yeah. not gonna <laughs> happen but like you know these sort of guys you talk about like you can have mm-hmm. in conversations with them you can have interactions with them get coached by them they're accessible to, yeah they're accessible yeah. Mm. which is pretty cool speaking of lebron james we've actually got him on the podcast next week so <laughs> oh nice keep your keep your ears tuned for that one <laughs> oh, sweet <laughs> mamba mentality <laughs> <laughs> it's Kobe Bryant, RIP the goat. Um, <laughs> next question is best advice when getting back into the gym after an injury. Never been injured. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, bro. Don't ask me. You guys talk first. I'll finish it off. What would you say? One of your lifters gets injured. Oh. Daniel, what do you do? I'm the worst person to ask. My mentality is ain't nothing to it but to do it. Ooh, like <laughs> no, no the pain, no gain, baby. <laughs> I always say about myself: if I'm ever injured, the only way to fix it is to put it through severe trauma, and then it's going to fix itself. Wow! If you want coaching, hit him up. <laughs> well, I've been injured so far. Mm. There you go. That's a lie. <laughs> no, give me one serious injury. What the f- oh, okay. Yeah, because anytime it's mild, I put it through severe trauma, and I'm back, baby. Didn't you tear your pick not long ago? I was going to say, you've been complaining about your pick for 12 months. I injured it. No, no, no. I injured it. Put it mm. through severe trauma. Yeah, I'm back, And baby. it's still torn. <laughs> no. And it hasn't healed. Five weeks. It's back. All right. Okay. Yeah, I heard it like six weeks before nationals and right. I still benched at nationals. So Daniel's advice is injuries aren't fucking real. Go yeah. harder. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. yeah That's if what you I li- said. Don't ask me. Yeah. I'm not this person to speak to. Mm. If someone came to me and they were genuinely injured, I would honestly say- don't ask me about it. Like, go and seek someone that has a professional opinion. Fair enough. Um, best advice when getting back into the gym after an injury for myself, I'd just say take it easy. Do what you can. You don't need a... You don't need a... Well, it depends what the injury is as well. If someone if someone came to me with a sore knee and said, hey, my knee's sore, I'm like, cool. Well, we're not doing anything for your knee today. We're going to do some upper body. And yeah, like you said, I'd recommend them to a professional. Go see a physio. Go sort it out. Same. Um, okay, well, now I have to give the... <laughs> yeah, we want a, this is why we want a real answer. The, the eclectic answer. Mm. Um, so when you experience trauma of any kind, your body goes into, or your brain goes into hyper learning. That's where PTSD comes from. It's like when you're in a traumatic situation, your brain is taking in all the information around you like crazy, like tenfold to what you're normally doing. So your brain can remember if I'm in this situation, I need to have this fight or flight response. So when you get injured in the gym, when you experience an injury, your brain goes into hyper learning and wants to prevent that from happening again. And the hardest thing about returning after an injury is not constantly looking for it to happen. Like you tear your quad doing a squat, the next time you squat, like you go through the rehab process, you're starting to get heavy again. All you're going to think about is, am I going to tear my, my quad again? Um, and so that's, that's the hardest part about returning from injury. And the advice I would have is um, you have to take the data as it comes. So like do a squat session, didn't tear your quad, you're good. You know, take that data next time you go into the session because you're going to be stuck on this period of hyper learning where all you can imagine is tearing your quad and you're going to have sessions after sessions after sessions where you don't do it and you're going to forget about all that. So you have to focus on the data that's right in front of you. That doesn't mean you ignore the past, uh, but you have to override it if you're going to get any confidence back. And a lot of lifters will struggle with that, will really struggle with um, getting that confidence back after experiencing injury because all they focus on is the past. The other thing especially in strength sports is again, taking the data that's in front of you and being like, okay, well maybe I squatted 300 in the past. I tore my quad. I had this injury. 
you have to accept that what you did in the past is not what you can do now and take what's in front of you and just be happy with that. Like think of it as a clean slate, you've reset and you're going back into it. Um, the final thing that I'd say is injuries don't come from nowhere. Uh, there's a reason for an injury. It may be impossible to identify what that reason is. You know, Sometimes they do just happen, whether it's genetic factors or whatever. Uh, but you should be looking at like what was going on in my programming, in my life, my recovery, my nutrition, uh, what was going on with my technique. Is there something I can do differently about how I'm training to ensure that in the future that this doesn't happen again? And you may not know what the answer is, and that's where like all you guys said, the professionals come to play, seek a better technical coach, seek a better physiotherapist, seek, seek whatever th therapist or specialist or whatever you need uh, to ensure you don't get injured again. I was just joking with my answer. That was my answer too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, next it's, question. Yeah. You, while you're getting ready to say the next question. It's funny you say that though. Like I went to this, I don't know if you remember him. His name was Dr. Matthew something he trained here he had had this like um flesh eating disorder in his leg no you've told me about him i remember him from the old gym though. Yeah, yeah 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 he used to bring in this flywheel thing mm. uh, for us to play with but he's um like a head professor at griffith and he specializes in hamstring stuff and he invited me when the commonwealth games was on he invited me to this hamstring injury symposium where all these like top tier nerd professors were riffing about hamstring stuff and i'm just like this overweight powerlifter being like mm, hamstrings <laughs> but like when when professional sprinters tear their hamstrings they have them sprinting the next day yeah like wow. complete ruptures they have them moving the next day uh all in part of like i don't know blood flow and motor patterns and laying down the foundation for the healing to happen it's pretty crazy how intense they go with like how hard they work the area now that i'm not saying daniel's advice tear a peck and bench heavy the next day is the best advice but it's just funny how to, how to see what they do in other sports. Mm. Well, like, that's like when you tore your pick, you know, the next day you're doing flies. You know, you're getting some blood flow moving to the to the traumatized area. That's right. Mm. Yeah. I was just, yeah, somewhat joking around. But yeah, like if you do get injured, I mean, if you then avoid that a area so much, it just sometimes makes it worse. Mm. Well, that's what I did. That's why my Achilles is still kind of fucked. Um, it's still really stiff. Like the, um, I, like my calf muscles is really atrophied in comparison to my other one it's just because i avoided it for so long and i was just lucky at the time i found powerlifting so i was like i can avoid this for mm. a little bit longer i don't really need to jump or run or anything like like that but i just avoided doing anything that would cause any more trauma and yeah that's why now i still have a little bit of trouble with it so yeah get it moving um next question under the guidance of a professional yeah <laughs> yes better just tag that in there uh next question <laughs> GVC versus GVT versus 531. Which one? For those of you that don't know, GVT is German volume training versus Jim Windler's 531. Does anyone have a, an opinion? Does anyone have an answer? I'll go first. GVT. All the way. Yeah, 10, 10 sets of 10. 10. You're going to get the nastiest pump. Gross. Ha have you done anything like that? No, I haven't done either of them. Me either. I did German volume training for bench press. Yeah. Mm. I did 531 for like two years. Yeah. <laughs> before I knew what programs were. <laughs> but I did it wrong. I just did 531, but I didn't deload uh, because I'm like, I'm not equipped. I don't need a deload. So essentially, I spent like a year and a bit peaking. And then I wrote my own program, which was 321, because I didn't want to do five reps. <laughs> so it's the same thing, but it was just three reps, two reps, one rep. <laughs> Um, and essentially, again, it was peaking. It actually, this is this actually transitioned me into running proper programs because I remember uh, this is before I had the gym or anything. I was just training, and I was training with a guy that I met online, um, and he was a powerlifter too. And I told him about my program, I'm like it's the best, man. Like it's so good. And I was way stronger than him. He's like, you're just peaking all the time. I'm like, what do you know? You don't know anything. So I went home and Googled what peaking was because I didn't know. I'd never heard of that word. So I Googled peaking and I'm like, oh, wow, I really am. <laughs> I better do something different. And I stopped doing that and then I started getting stronger. Nice. Well, I stopped doing that and I started doing shaker. <laughs> <laughs> then I tore my labrum. So the rest, the rest is history. How good. Speaking of funny programs, what else did I do? I did Mike O'Hearn's power building program. Nice. He's natty. Yeah, yeah, he looks it too. Uh, <laughs> seven by five. 
this that's his thing and it was seven by five and everything at the time and i remember it said like you have to go way he- you have to go really heavy and my mate was like we have to go heavy bro we've got to do heavier than what we can do and i'm like okay so i remember doing this program and he picked up the 50 kilo dumbbells and at this stage we were both probably pressing the 30s like the 30s for like a hard set of eight we're like 21 and i remember him trying to get up the 50s and he's like no nah, they're too heavy bro <laughs> i was like it's a big jump <laughs> he's like they're way too heavy i'm like all right he's like we'll try the 45s <laughs> <laughs> and i was like fuck uh, these that's and, wild yeah no so that's uh yeah mike ohan what a mad dog next question which vaccine has the best macros caleb voice thank you for that question Anyone? Nah. No one's researched the macros. Check my fitness pal. <laughs> Pfizer. <laughs> Pfizer all the way. None of this Moderna. Moderna. All right. Next question. This is the first time I've mentioned or heard of a vaccine in ages now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's so good that no one talks about it anymore. Wait, mm-hmm. have you noticed everyone at the Apple store still wears masks? Why? I have an Apple. Yeah, true. But you walk past the Apple store and everyone's still wearing masks that work there. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they have a policy. Mm. Yeah, no one wears them in the airport anymore. Mm. You're still supposed yeah. to in the airport, but everyone's just given up. But um, you did definitely have to wear them on the plane. Do you reckon it's because Apple's owned by, what's his name? And he's like on the World Health Organization. What's uh, his name? The dude that, by who? Who owns Apple? Steve um, Jobs. Steve Wozniak? No. Some I'm fucking way off that. Steve Jobs you owns about fucking Bill Gates. Steve, yeah, bro. The guy Steve that owns Jobs Microsoft. Work. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, my bad. Wow. Yeah. You're talking about Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah I am. <laughs> <laughs> talking about his number one co- competition. Oh, it's like this is like, yeah, you know how Colonel Sanders started McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. All right. Um Who next. started McDonald's? Um it was the the two brothers mm. and then um Ray Kroc franchised it and mm. screwed the Stole it. Yeah. yeah. What is that? That's a cool uh, movie. The founder. Yeah. yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. We actually had to learn about it in uni. Uh, we I did a unit that had a, a, like three lectures on the McDonaldization of society. I did one it on Coca-Cola. Really, it was, was really a fascinating. Thing. Yeah. Mm. Coke's, Coke's messed up though. Coke, mm. Coke would go into, um, and they still do, they go into third world countries where bottled water is super expensive and then they sell the Coke for cheaper than the bottled water. Because mm. they want it to be the number one drink in every country. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Brazil, places like Papua New Guinea, like uh, countries that are struggling, they go and mess up. And a lot of those, a lot of those um, cultures have pre- uh, predisposition genetic predisposition to diabetes yeah so it like ramps up diabetes rates oh in these God. countries because they're drinking more coke than water it's well horrifying. there's like um in mexico there's like because uh, i think mexico has got the biggest coca-cola usage or whatever what do you, however you want to call it yeah south america is probably the most messed up place for it in mm. general wow. but in mexico there's like spiritual healers that use coca-cola like you drink this and you get better nice which is yeah. crazy <laughs> For us, it's Pepsi Max. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is honesty. Pepsi Max. Um, I've probably had only about five cans of Pepsi Max in the last three months, four months. Mm. I've been on a roll. Actually, we need a team meeting after the stock's getting pretty low. So, Is it? Yeah. <laughs> What's that mean, Bridget? Go to Campbell's? <laughs> no, just, you know, whoever on the team mm. has the availability. <laughs> How many cans are left? I don't know, like four. Never enough. <laughs> once, once Daniel leaves, one. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, do you drink them? He does, eh? Just all didn't tell you. Open the chicken <laughs> bin, chicken <laughs> bin. <laughs> no, they're all my cans in that. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, we've got a serious question here. Five best tips for new PTs in the industry. Where did that question come from? You? I didn't ask one of them. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. It was the five be- the five tips to grow a successful coaching business. Oh yeah, that one. But that's different. Now let's do that. Okay. Five five tips for new PTs. Believe in yourself. Mm. Yeah, Have nice. faith in yourself. It's taken me a long time, but I'm starting to believe in myself now. It's How'd you do it? Um, I just started to listen to people around me who were encouraging me, and yeah, trying to get rid of that imposter syndrome that we always talk about. Mm-hmm. Taking yeah. stock of the evidence. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's my tip. What would you say? Oh, don't <laughs> ask me. What's a, what's a tip for the for a new PT? 
Oh, don't ask me. Do you call yourself a PT? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> the strength coach, entrepreneur, <laughs> yeah. mogul, president. Um, definitely El not presidente. The, definitely not the best advice on this one. Um, what do I have? Ah, <sighs> I don't know. Five best tips. What's a good tip? Buy, uh, buy a gym and then the clients will come to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like I can't really... My story is a little bit different because I've never had to build up my... Well, no, I guess I have had to build up a, a coaching business inside of... I don't, don't know. Really look into things like advertising and marketing. Mm. Like how to market yourself as a better person. If you can do that and you can market yourself you will have a successful PT business. The unfortunate thing about the industry we work in is it doesn't matter how much knowledge you are, how good you are, if you can't get your name out there, mm. you're never going to be successful. If you can market yourself in a really good way to actually showcase the skills you have, you'll do really well. Um, I think that's probably my best advice, mm. which is shit about it because, yeah, you could be educated, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but some fitness model will come out and be like, oh, I just made such and such program and they will absolutely kill it mm. just because they've marketed themselves really well. Mm. So yeah, no, absolutely. good at running your own business. On top of that as well, it's just having a really solid product. You know, yeah, creating a really good product for your clients um, that gets results. Obviously, that's what everyone goes to a PT for, to get results in uh, some way, shape or form. So having a yeah, really solid product is also something you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, they're all great points. Um, I would say, uh, you know, what Daniel said in terms of understand that you're a, you're now a business owner. You're not just, uh, you're not working for someone, you're working for yourself. So you do need to have a handle on marketing sales, on knowing how to get people to come to you so you can sell to them. That's really important. Like James says, you need to have a good product. You're going to get that by doing the zero coach development, uh, program. Next intake is middle of September. Contact me now for more details. Uh, all of that stuff is really important. Absolutely. I'd say uh, learn to be confident, but don't don't cross the line to being cocky uh, because cockiness will uh, hold back your growth uh, and you need to be constantly learning and growing. Uh, the last thing I'd say is um, more doing, less planning. You know, like a lot of people plan out, like write a business plan of how things are going to go, or plan out every, you know, perfect day and all of this. So just get out there and start doing stuff because no matter what you plan, it's going to change based on what you're doing anyway. So planning's good. Having an idea is good. Yeah, absolutely. Think about it, plan it out, but do at the same time. Mm. I guess it's like people doing their degree in ex-phys or uh, exercise science or even doing their personal training stuff. You, you don't learn how to coach or train people until you, until you start training people. You never, you never see a lazy, uh, any successful personal trainer in like a commercial gym. They all work really hard as well. You never see a lazy, successful personal trainer. Yeah. And I think obviously being a powerlifting podcast, we'd assume that people watching this are powerlifting orientated. I would say as well as if you want to be a really good powerlifting coach, you need to disconnect with the idea of being strictly a powerlifting coach. You're not, if you start off on day one, you're not going to get all these powerlifters come to you and be like, oh, I want to do this comp, that comp, whatever, all these sort of powerlifters. You need to be willing to coach anybody and everybody, A, to get that experience and B, the people that are going to come to you that are just your everyday people, once they love training, once they get amongst it, then they become powerlifting focused. Exactly. So do not box yourself in to be like, I'm just a strict powerlifting coach when you've been doing it for two minutes. Mm -hmm. When you're more advanced, you've been doing it for a couple of years, whatever, you've got lots of clientele, then maybe you can make that decision. But even then, like it's not a wise decision to make, but you need to disconnect with that idea of just being like, I'm a strictly powerlifting coach. I'm going to be an online powerlifting coach when you've been in it for a minute. Mm. I didn't yeah, mean to run that either. Get your reps in. Um, that's about it for the questions. Um, our topic is, what does maturity look like in the gym? We can look at this from uh, many different lenses and angles, but what does maturity look like in the gym? I think a big thing is, is learning, uh, as in learning and then applying that that uh, experience, applying that knowledge to your training to continue to progress. There's a lot of people with 20 years of experience in the gym, which is actually just one year of experience repeated 20 times. Mm. Um, so being willing to, you know, pay attention to what's happening, pay attention to what's actually driving a result, and then being able to lean into that, which means being willing to change. Um, because it's really easy. It's just like 
a lack of sleep. You know, it's easy to adapt to a lack of sleep and then be okay with feeling shit all the time. The gym's the same. Like we've all trained at commercial gyms where you've seen the same person consistently going there without fail. You know, maybe they train four or five days a week, but over the course of the years that you're there, they look the same. They're not any leaner. They're not any bigger. They're not any stronger. And if you went up to them and asked them, hey, do you want to be bigger and stronger? They'd be like, yeah, that's why I go to the gym. So why aren't you any bigger and stronger? Yeah, so that, that would be one big thing. I think uh, maturity means self-assessment and being willing to say, okay, I'm not actually getting any better now. I need to change something. Understanding what your goals are and be willing to go after that one thing. If you're trying to, like, you know, if you're trying to chase two rabbits, you're going to lose both. So if you're like, I want to be bigger, I want to be leaner, I want to be stronger, you want to be 10 different things and you're trying to achieve all 10 at once, you're going to fail at all 10. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? Like you can't build heaps of muscle, cut down heaps of fat, get stronger, get leaner, all these sort of things at the same time. So to pick that one goal, the two sort of similar goals and follow those two things, that's how you're going to get the best results. Picking multiple things, wanting to be multiple things at once, I think you're going to set yourself up for failure. Yeah, also understanding that progress isn't linear. As well, not getting upset when training doesn't go your way every week. Not getting emotional when you miss a lift. I used to get very emotional when I'd max out and I couldn't get a lift. Now I just adapt and overcome. Yeah. Nice. Um, we say this almost every episode, but just managing your expectations mm-hmm. as well. Uh, when I first started training, I thought I was going to do bicep curls for six months and have a huge bicep peak. Uh, you know, understanding that, um, like Bridget said, not all progress is linear. There are going to be some... Uh, some bumps in the road on your journey to greater strength or whatever you're chasing but yeah just manage your expectations if you're not doing everything that you possibly could in your favor of uh getting those results like you know you can't be you can't be mad when you don't get those results Mm -hmm. yeah a, a part of what we've all said is just taking a step back and seeing the bigger picture like if you're in the gym or you're trying to get stronger or you're trying to do powerlifting right now Chances are you don't have an end date in your head to that. You don't have a, an expiry date, so you're just going to keep doing it. And so it means laying down the foundation for greater you know, greater return on investment later on. It's the same with business. People get into business like, I want to make money, I want to make money, I want to make money. It's like you can you can try hard to make money in the, in the short term and lose sight of the things that you can lay down now that will make you a lot more money in the long term. Um, and so... Having, having stock of the bigger picture, being able to step back and be like, okay, well, I'm in a phase of training, which means I'm going to feel weaker or I'm in a period of training, like Daniel was saying, focusing on one goal at a time where I'm trying to get leaner, which means I will be weaker or my weights will be down or whatever. Being okay with that because you've got sight of the bigger picture. Sweet. Nice. <laughs> it wasn't really a topic. It was more of a question. Yeah. We've made a good time. Yeah. I think we might wrap it up there. Any random questions for Daniel while we've got him? Nah. Are you, you going to be doing <laughs> any eating contests when you're in Alabama? I don't know. You should. Mm. I'll be out of condition. You're going to make How long are you there for? You're going to peak for it. Oh, do you? Well, it's all about managing your expectations. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> yeah, how long are you over there for? Uh, I don't know. How long are we going to go for? Uh-huh. Well, we have to be back for Worlds in Australia. You guys have to be back for it. <laughs> Please <Yeah>. come back. <laughs> yeah, I love a last minute planning. These people that plan months in advance. The worst. I'm not mm. a fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, we'll call it there, eh? Nice having you, Daniel. Mm. <laughs> this is the worst ending ever. <laughs> <laughs> nah, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on the potty, Daniel. We might have you on more. More. I don't know. Depends how this goes. Uh, depends if Thomas wants you back. We or want Rochelle. We want Rochelle. We <laughs> want Rochelle. Mate. I didn't ask her. My bad. I keep, I keep saying we're me. gonna do a nutrition podcast. Yeah, call her, not me. Mm. But Daniel was like a. I told you, I rung Daniel. You want to jump on the potty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I stopped yeah. everything I was doing for this. Yeah, I was flat out. No, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Flat stick. <laughs> nah, thanks for tuning in to Z- another episode of the Zero Weakness Podcast. Thanks, guys. Right, I'm going to go do some handyman stuff. Thank you so much for listening to the Zero Podcast. If you want more information, head to our Instagram, zero underscore weakness. Hit the link in the bio for all of our services and any information on upcoming workshops and events. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review so we can have a broader reach and answer more people's questions. Thank you once more.